Let's see how you can take your 3D scans from this to this. Most 3D scans don't have the best topology and the mesh has many loose parts where it should be connected. If you use a remeshing tool on this object, like instant meshes or quad remesher, the resulting object will also have the same disconnected mesh. So we need to connect the mesh first. You can use the weld modifier for this, but it can remove some details from the scan, so I'm not using it in this case. Create a duplicate of the original scan, as we will need it later on, and we will remesh this duplicated object. I like to use the voxel remesh first, to get a single, connected geometry. You can also control the mesh density here. A denser mesh will preserve more detail from the original scan. If you're not concerned with the edge flow of your object, you can skip this step and use the voxel remeshed object instead. For this video I'll use a free software called Instant Meshes, which does require an OBJ file as input, so let's save our model as OBJ, and import it into Instant Meshes. If you have Quad Remesher, you can use that for better results. It is a paid add-on, but you don't have to export anything outside of Blender, and it does give pretty good results, without messing with too many settings. Here, in Instant Meshes, you can adjust the target vertex count and also adjust the topology to some extent. But I won't be getting into these settings, to keep this video short. Save this new model and import it back to Blender. I will use the shrink wrap modifier to best match the shape of the original scan. Before we get the textures back on this model, we need a UV map for it. I'll use Smart UV Project to unwrap the mesh, but you can also mark seams and unwrap it manually if you like. Next, we will bake the texture from the original skin to the remeshed object. In the shader editor, create a new material for our object and add an image texture. Create a new image and adjust the resolution that you want. Go to the render properties and reduce the number of samples and light bounces. This helps in speeding up the baking process if you're working with bigger objects and textures. In the bake tab, let's select the diffuse option first and uncheck direct and indirect influence. Then check selected to active. Make sure the correct image texture is selected for both objects.
both the objects should be in the same place for the baking process to work and must be visible for render. Now, select the original scan first, then select the remeshed object by pressing Shift. Or you can do it from the outliner, select the original scan then press Ctrl and select the new object. Now press Bake. After the image is done baking, don't forget to save it. If your bake doesn't look right, and has grey or black spots, this is because the remeshed object doesn't match the original scan exactly. To fix this, go to the selected to active menu and increase the extrusion slightly. I'll increase this by 1 cm. Test with different values and see what works best for you, but don't increase this too much or you will start getting texture overlaps. Now bake the texture again. Once this is done, Repeat the baking process for the other maps, roughness and normal in my case. Make sure to set the color space to non-color for these maps. Now, you can bring in the baked texture maps and connect it to their respective sockets in the principled BSDF. Once all the textures are connected correctly, you can export this final mesh in whichever format you prefer.